What's the capper like after six months of ownership? At this point, I've gone through all the quirks. I've ironed out my opinions of the bike. If you've been watching my previous videos, you know I started with a Trek Roscoe 8 hardtail and was fairly nervous of going from that straight to an enduro bike that's kind of tipping itself into a downhill bike. So in this video, I'd like to go over the common questions I keep getting in the comments, and I'll do my best to be as honest as I possibly can, even though I am biased, I absolutely love the bike. One of the main questions I get a lot was, how does the bike climb? Is it hard to climb? And no, it climbs quite well. I'm sure a lot of that has to do with this uh, SRAM 1x12. If people are coming from 1x10s and 1x11s, uh, I think you'll be absolutely amazed to see what the 1x12 does. You can just put it in that lowest gear and just keep going uphill, man. I truly don't think it's a hard bike to climb. So another big question is going to be the lockouts. Does it have lockouts? And the answer is no. It doesn't have lockouts on the front or the rear of the bike. For me, so far, it, that hasn't bothered me. Even on my Roscoe, I never locked out my front suspension. I just rode the dang bike. Uh, I kind of like just hopping on this thing and going for it and not having to worry about, oh, I forgot to lock out my suspension and having a hardtail ride down a hill, basically. Uh, for me, it's it's a pretty good compromise. However, YT made this bike, the compromise of climbing versus going downhill with it, uh, I think it works quite well. Another question I get a lot, is this 180 millimeters of travel too much for me? Or too much for the trails that I ride? Uh, if you've been watching my channel, you kind of know, you know what I do, where I ride. Uh, I know the GoPro doesn't show a lot of steep stuff. I do ride a lot of janky, rocky stuff. That's pretty much all we have here on the Central Coast. Um, is the suspension too much for me? No, definitely not. Uh, I know when I first bought the bike, uh, I put it at 220 in the front, 110 in the rear, uh, and that was pushing me about 23% uh, sag for the front and rear. And man, it was almost like riding a hardtail. It was just way too firm for me. Um, so recently I've kind of lowered that down. I think I'm at about, about 95 in the front and 190 in the rear. And that's made a load of difference for me. I think I'm sitting about 30% sag or just under 30% sag front and rear. And even climbing to me has felt better. Feels like the, you know, the tires track the ground better as I'm climbing, less bouncing and slitting or tire spinning. Um, it just kind of feels like the tire just sticks to the road. I don't feel crazy bobble while I'm, you know, climbing up hills and stuff like that. It, it goes quite well for me still. The distance and travel that I have, uh, it's not slowing me down in my opinion. Uh, if anything slows me down out there on the trail, it's me, not my bike. So um, to me, I feel like I have you know room to grow in it, which is kind of cool too. The other question I get a lot is, should I buy a 27.5 or a 29er? For me, I bought the 27.5 instead of the 29 because um, going from you know that the previous bike I had to this bike, the ergonomics, the length of the bike was considerably more. I was nervous about not being able to kind of, you know, maneuver myself around on trails if I needed to kind of, you know, work myself around a rock or something like that. I just figured, you know, it already seems like it's going to be a boat because of the long, because of the steep head angle and just the bike is fairly long. Uh, but that hasn't been the case at all. At least with the 27.5s, I do feel like I can maneuver the bike quite well. I don't feel like. Uh, when I'm in corners that I have too much bike to maneuver through, uh, I can, you know, I can get through them quite well. Uh, I will say that if I could get my hands on a 29er, I wouldn't mind trying it out. Um, I would love to go to the YT shop in California and give it a try and see, you know, what the difference is between the 29er. Um, I still don't regret my 27.5 decision. Uh, I still love the bike a lot. Um, I'm sure I could go a little bit faster, but I'm not an enduro racer. I'm just trying to have fun and enjoy going down hills and uh, getting a good workout in. So 27 Fiverr has been great for me. Another question I get a lot is what color is the bike? On the website, the bike's called Black Magic, and it looks like it's a jet black bike. It looks really cool on the website, and that's not what you get. Uh, if you watched my unboxing video, you know that it's basically a gray bike with a little bit of black kind of accenting down at the lower end. Uh, if I would have known that, I definitely would have bought the blue bike over the black one. The blue looked really good to me, it's just I've never really been a big fan of blue. <laughs> but knowing what I know now, seeing the gray and black versus the blue, I definitely would have bought the blue one. Um, I'm not saying that it's a bad color, it does look good, it's still a very good looking bike. Uh, the contrast between the black and the gray is, is kind of neat, uh, it's just, it's kind of dull to me, it's kind of boring, but um, it's still, it's still, it's still a good looking bike. So what have I done to the bike since I got it? Honestly, not much at all. Uh, I put, you know, the uh, granite stash tools and the handlebars and the stem there. 
I put a little mud guard on there. I did a bunch of frame protection. Definitely kind of overdid that, but it's the frame's still in good shape. There's no scratches anywhere on it, so I'd like to keep it that way. Uh, the other thing was the GX derailleur. If you watched, uh, I'll link that video up here. So if you want to watch that, the issues I had with the SX derailleur, and I had to get rid of that and go to the GX. But as for the water bottle, not having a water bottle for me, I'm kind of a nerd. I'm always, you know, doing a YouTube video or trying to make it, make some drone footage or something like that. So I have to carry a Camelback with water anyway, and carry enough space in that Camelback to carry the drone and a bunch of camera gear. So uh, for me, not having a water bottle, I really haven't cared so far. It doesn't bother me. Uh, I'm sure it would be kind of nice to just throw a water bottle on and do a short ride. Um, that part would be kind of nice, but I do have a smaller Camelback if it does get to that point where I could just uh, make it a little bit easier on myself, but so far not having a water bottle hasn't bothered me at all. So what do you think about the Campra? Would you buy it? Would you buy the, the Jesse or maybe the new Izzo? Let me know in the comments what bike you would buy. I personally wouldn't mind trying out that Izzo. Uh, thanks again for watching my videos. I truly enjoy making content that helps people with their decision and their purchase. I personally never buy anything without doing my YouTube research first. We'll see you next week.